Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Uh, the countdown to the Old Firm game has started. Former Celtic midfielder Alan Thompson says Joey Barton should do his talking on the pitch. Ian Durant was also speaking today in Glasgow and he says anyone who is happy with a top four finish at Rangers shouldn't be at the club. And SPFL Chief Executive Neil Doncaster says Scottish clubs should be open-minded to Colt teams playing in League Two. That's just a few of the topics Alan Ruff and myself, Peter Martin, will be discussing with our bootroom guest. I'm delighted to say, Air United midfielder uh, Gary Harkins. Uh, well, uh, Air United midfielder Gary Harkins takes a bit of getting used to. Uh, you caught us by surprise. Why Air United? Uh, just because I wanted to take that step into coaching. Obviously, I knew um, the gaffer really well and I got on really well with him and I enjoyed playing under him. So um, hopefully, I can take some of my form from before with them to, to this season. Were you worried about taking that step down from Dundee to uh, the Championship? Um, no, not at all really. It was another challenge for me. Um, I've been in the Championship before and it's it's a tough league. There's a lot of good clubs in it, so um, no, it should be a good challenge. Yeah. Were you disappointed about the way it ended at Dundee? Because clearly, from your point of view, last season, you know you were a, you were a mainstay. You were a man that was in the middle of it. It's disappointing, yeah, because I, I love Dundee as a club. Um, I've been there a few times and um, I really love it. Get on great with the fans. I think I've got a good rapport with them. So it was disappointing the way it, the way it finished, but you never know. You could end up back there some someday. Yeah, as manager. Um, <laughs> uh, we can't wait for you to just say, Ruffy, get back, get back, <laughs> cover that man. Uh, I mean, uh, how many luxury players will he afford in his own side? Yeah, but, uh, you know, Air United's always been a team with a flair player. You know, the wee boy Templeton was fantastic when, uh, when I was there then. And I think the, the supporters will take to Gary's style of play, I'm, I'm sure. And uh, given a good run there, I'm sure the support will come back. You see, I thought I'd mention that, Gary, how he labelled you uh, a luxury player all those years. Years ago, but um, uh, again, you know, you might be taking a step down, but it's a it's a really competitive division. Well, it's a, a really tough league. There's a lot of a lot of big clubs in it. Um, you look at Hibs, Falkirk. There's big teams there, so no, it's good for the. The boys at Air United, there's some really good young players to go and play against these teams and go to these places and play. Yeah, well, we're going to talk Air United a, a little later on. We'll bring you the uh, draw for the uh, Challenge Cup uh, and we will also be talking uh, Scottish women's football as well. Um, the countdown to the Old Firm game, would you believe, Tuesday, it's already started. Uh, two former midfielders were in Glasgow today. One of them, uh, Alan Thompson, knows Joey Barton well and he says it's time the Rangers midfielder uh, did his talking on the pitch. I know Joey well, I uh, work with him at Newcastle, um, he does do a lot of talking with his mouth Joey but if I can give him any advice just say go and do it on the pitch Joey, don't do it off the pitch, go and do it on it because he's a good footballer. And of course uh, Tomo knows a thing or two about old firm <laughs> games, I don't think he lasted too long in his first one. No I think uh, by all accounts you can get caught up in them uh, and certainly he did in his game I'm sure uh, Joey Barton will be getting uh, a lot of knowledge and wisdom from people. David Weir, you know, who have played in these games, and I'm sure he's experienced enough, well, I'm hoping he's experienced enough to go in there and show us, you know, what he can do on the park. I, I don't think he, he really has hit the heady heights of what we were expecting, you know, for maybe it's fitness or whatever. But this is an ideal opportunity for him to, to go into that game and stamp his authority on it. Yeah, and uh, lesser men uh, and maybe even greater men have uh, folded under the intensity uh, and scrutiny of old firm fans in this derby. It, it is an incredible match. Even uh, the best of them sometimes freeze in it. Uh, it's, uh, I really, I really think the atmosphere. It's, um, I've been to a few of them, and you, you could get caught up in it. You can see players maybe freezing under it, not wanting the ball, um, and <coughs> you, you see some bad. Bad challenges, bad decisions getting made. So, um, I'm sure Joey Barton's mature enough now to go and to go and play in it and not let it affect him. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought it was really funny when Tomo mentioned today. It's probably the last thing he needs to do is uh, you know allow the red mist to descend over him, Ruffy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Alan Thompson was sent off in more than a few games mm -hmm. because, quite simply, the fans want to see that first crunching yeah. tackle. And Joey's kind of a set himself up um, mm -hmm. as saying he wants to be one of the top players uh, in Scotland this season. And this is the game where he has to prove it. Yeah, the Gary's touched on it. You know, there are players who do get caught up in it. You know, Alan Thompson was one. You can see Joey Barton's another. Scott Brown's the same. They want to be involved. They want to be in the action. They want to be 
you know, and amongst it, and, and you've just got to sort of hold your back, self back a wee bit. But I mean, as as we're speaking, you know, everybody will be anxiously waiting in that first 50 50, you know, with Joey Barton and Scott Brown, and there'll be nothing held back. So let's hope that they're, they're pretty fair and the, the referee has not got any decisions to make. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, if time tells you anything, it's uh, it's great to see two uh, former old firm stars back together today. Uh, Alan Thompson on one side and of course another uh, midfielder, a top drawer midfielder in Ian Durant. He was, uh, of course, uh, looking ahead to the game, but mentioned the fact that some people think Rangers should satisfy themselves with maybe just finishing in the top four. Ian Durant was having none of it. Rangers wanted to finish more than top four. Now that's 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 what comes with old firm. That's that's the pressure old firm. If you won't accept being a top four player, you're not last long at Rangers. You're not last long at Celtic. You need to aim as high as you can and, and what you want to get out of the game. That's all about expectation, Ruffy, mm -hmm. of the fans. Yeah, and you soon find out when you walk through the doors of these two clubs that that is the expectation. You win, win, win. You know, what other clubs you'd be used to going away in a away game and getting a draw, and you would be in the bus going, fantastic. You know, getting a draw for away from home with Rangers and Celtic is, is nothing at all. You know, you need to win. The, the, the supporters demand it, and you, and you get hit very, very early on as soon as you go there. And I'm sure both sets of players will know... Uh, how if you win this game you walk about with your held high for the, till the next one you know you don't win it and you're hiding till the next one yeah and if the last encounter tells you anything Gary it doesn't matter about the financial muscle of one side anything can go in this one uh, again it's just about the teams that handle it I think the one last year Rangers were excellent I think they, they controlled the game for the start passed the ball about and uh, it showed that Celtic um, struggled in it so it doesn't matter it's, it is like a cup game, it's a derby, and it could go, go in it either way. Yeah, you just wonder how crucial the psychological advantage of winning the first one will be, uh, Ruffy. I think the, the, the one element of this is the gap that could possibly open up or the real mm -hmm. shot in the arm of belief for Mark Warburton's side if they win. Yeah, whoever wins a game, you know, they'll take something out of it, they'll use it to their advantage, you know, there'll be a lot of chat about it. there's a gap there, there's not a gap there, you know, that uh, Rangers, as Ian Durant has said, uh, won't settle for fourth, you win that game, you're talking maybe winning it, you know, all these things will start getting thrown out there, so it's a massive game. Uh, we haven't played each other since that game, so it is a sort of a judging moment, you know, of where both sides are. And uh, I think everybody will take what the score is on board. Yeah, and Willie Collum is the one man that both sets of fans, I think, will be united in uh, showing that they don't like the referee, <laughs> <laughs> sadly. Um, but he's, uh, for me, he's up there as one of the referees that can handle this uh, atmosphere. Aye. Um, I've obviously been in games with Willie's refereed and he's he's quite easy to talk to. He's, he's one that you can speak to and he will explain things to you um, so he'll be a good referee for, for this one hopefully he's not too rash, rash in getting the cards out and it's a good game and it's, it's kept 11 v 11 yeah that, that's the key point I think uh, you know from a player's perspective it's good to hear someone giving us an insight into the qualities of Willie mm -hmm. um, the, the downside of it is sometimes you know he can be quick to fire out the yellow mm -hmm. cards early on. It's the last thing you need in a in, in a Glasgow derby. No, I think he's moved on. Uh, I think uh, if we cast our mind back, <clears throat> there was a time that every game he refereed and something was happening. You know, yeah. and uh, he was coming under a lot of unfair criticism. But I think since that time moved on, I don't I think I've seen his name mentioned at any game. You know, so obviously mm. he's maturing, he's, he's, he's playing in bigger games, he's getting all the experience in the world and it's a difficult one getting into the games because you see the first bad tackle and if you don't get a yellow card, sometimes players being players go, oh, he's not handing it out for that, so I'll just have a fire in here. So it's a difficult one to sort of assess and what you do. So it's a, it's a tough, really, really hard tie for a, a referee. Yeah, and, and, and strangely enough in our country, because sometimes we can be so insular in the way we think about referees, especially coming up mm. to a Celtic Rangers match, but on on the continent, he started off yeah. highly. Well, he got a good write-up from the, was it the Germany game we done all night? Um, and they were, they were very happy with him, said that he stayed out of the game and let the game go on. So the same type of performance on Saturday and I don't see many people complaining. Yeah, as long as we're not talking about him at the end of the game, Ruffy, I think that's when you know, as Gary said, he's had a good game. Yeah, and I'm sure all the officials at the game will be hoping that's the case. And the biggest thing is that when we hear managers and players get the big decisions right uh, and that's the biggest part of the game for me.
Yeah, absolutely. OK, we're going to speak more to uh, Gary Harkins about that uh, Challenge Cup draw. Uh, we're also going to talk about the possibility of Colt teams in League Two as well. The uh, SPFL Chief Executive Neil Doncaster has been speaking today about that. We'll also discuss the possibility of uh, UEFA uh, looking to uh, European leagues over the next few years. Uh, that's all to come in the next part of the programme. Join us if you can. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. Our bitroom guest is Air United's midfielder, Gary Harkins. Um, now, Neil Doncaster uh, was talking today at the uh, Iron Brew Challenge Cup draw. Uh, we'll look at the draw uh, in the next couple of minutes, but he was talking about uh, and asked the questions about court teams, mainly Celtic and Rangers in the uh, lower leagues in League Two. Are you for or against it, Ruffy? Uh, I think I'm for it. Uh, I think we also, uh, the benefits that the, the teams in that division got when Rangers were coming up through the division, uh, the old firm will go along and see their young players coming through. Uh, and I think other teams will get the benefit of it. But I, don't, I just don't think it would be Rangers and Celtic. I think Hibs and Aberdeen would, would all fancy that as well. Giving young players a chance to experience at least some kind of crowd there and uh, getting the benefits of playing at that level. So, you know, I, I think it's a good thing. Well, obviously, there has to be rules drawn up of how far they can go and, and promotion and relegation and all that kind of thing. But, uh, no, I think as far as bringing on young players, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, um, I have got to say I'm, I'm for it. It's a, a completely different game from under-20s football to first-team football. And if you're going to get your young boys to get better and to get the standard of football in the country up, I think it'd be a great start. Yeah, and of course the added bonus, as Ruffy mentioned there, Gary, is the fact that you know fans are willing to go out and watch, you know, mm -hmm. what essentially would be a second team out there playing. Mm -hmm. uh, especially the likes of Celtic, Rangers, Aberdeen, Hearts. They've got big crowds. They'll go and see their up and comings. They'll go, and uh, they'll they'll give other teams money. Now, dare I say it, Ruffy? I get the feeling over the next um, four or five years, and I don't think it's any great prophecy. I think a lot of people are looking at the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. The European leagues are going. Uh, the way the discussions are ongoing at the EFL at the moment, the English Football League certainly are considering a fifth division, which could involve maybe what five, six Scottish teams. I don't think we're, we're too far away from some kind of British league and then some kind of European league to satisfy, uh, you know, clubs that clearly haven't got the revenue streams of the Barclays Premier League. Mm -hmm. uh it comes up all the time, you know, we keep hearing about it and uh, I, I, although I think if you did the survey and Rangers and Celtic supporters, they would love to be down there with the big boys, you know, but I, I don't know where you would start, how long it would take you to get into that Premiership, we, we see the money that's getting made down in England, why would teams like Hull City, Swansea give up? You know the money that they're, they're, the hundreds of millions that they're bringing in. Well, they wouldn't start in the the Premier League anyway. No, no, that's what I'm saying. But I mean, the the, the complications again are starting in a fifth division and, and getting up without European football for five years or whatever. There's lots of pluses and lots of minuses, uh, if, and it comes up all the time. But I, I think it's the voting <coughs> uh, of the English clubs that would hit that in the head, and then the old. Would we lose our Scotland identity and a national side? All, all these things kept re raising up, and there's, there's always somebody will come up with something to hit it in the head. Yeah, I just get the feeling now, uh, Gary, because of the disparity in earnings, that you know more and more clubs are going to look for ways, especially with the European setup, to try and force UEFA into coming up with some sort of structure that gives them a chance to increase their revenues um, because if you're going to try and keep pace with the likes of, I mean, even Burnley mm -hmm. can outspend yeah. anybody in Scotland. Championship teams can outspend Scottish clubs, even Celtic and Rangers. They're, Newcastle spending 12 million in players and Celtic and Rangers won't do it. <coughs> um, so there is something needs to be looked at in that because the gap's just going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah, OK. Um, let's look at uh, the uh, Iron Brew Challenge Cup uh, draw. It was made today uh, at uh, Orium, the uh, new training complex. And, of course, uh, the Northern Irish teams and teams from Wales are also in uh, this draw. Uh, Ballatown against Alawa, Forfar against the New Saints, 
Crusaders against Livingston. Uh, this has got the feeling of uh, an ice hockey or an American football draw at the moment. Queen of the South against Linfield, Hibs St Mirren, Dunfermline against Queen's Park, Air United, Falkirk and Stranraer against Dundee United. What's your reaction, first of all, Gary, to uh, your home draw? Tough draw. Yeah, I think Falkirk are probably one of the best teams in our division anyway, so it'll be a tough draw, but glad it's at home and a few weeks we'll be, we'll be bang up to speed. Yep. And uh, Hibson been screaming mm. out at me, Ruffy. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll be a really, a really good one. I think Alec Ray will go there, it'll be a big crowd. Uh, and again, Hibs will be having their eye, as every club will be on, on a cup. You know, we always say, oh, it's not a big, big cup to win. But tell you, if you get to the final and your support's there numbers, uh, as Hibs showed the last time, it's a great cup to win, particularly so early on in the season. You know, you can build on it for the rest of the season if you win it. Yeah, uh, interestingly enough, when I mentioned there the Welsh sides and Northern Irish teams involved, that's why I get the feeling that slowly but surely UEFA sanctioning and accepting this type of tournament is just opening the doors, Ruffy, mm -hmm. to other cross-border games, uh, divisions. I just feel as if this is the starting point. Mm -hmm. But we used to do it. I mean, we used to do the Anglo Scottish <coughs> Cup and we used to do the Texaco Cup and no clubs came up. But I think things have moved on from them. Now, the English clubs don't want to be playing in wee, wee clubs like that. They want to be playing in, uh, in the big cups, you know, and... and I'm sure there'll be a lot of clubs would like to do the cross border, but I think it would be the clubs down down the division, and you know, like it is if they're not fielding their best side, supporters don't go and see it. Yeah, are you buying into that? I'm not so sure. I, I think because of the nature of the novelty factor of being able to play these teams in the first place, you know, you know, Scotland gets a huge support from clubs sets of fans who can't go on European trips, so they go and watch Scotland. Uh, that's why so many teams, I think. Are, you know, so many club f fans from north up north of Scotland mm -hmm. follow Scotland because they get a chance to go in and watch European football. I could see this type of tournament where Irish teams and Northern Irish teams, but there's that many games in England that they'll not they'll not want other competitions, other cup competitions. I think the if you play League Two, you can end up playing like fifty odd, sixty odd games. Yeah. So for for clubs in League Two, and that, I I can't see them wanting to add another cup or or play in other cups. Um, well, they've got to travel. I mean, you can see how the English treat their own League Cup, you know, with mm. disdain, with disdain until, yeah. until you get to the latter stages. But uh, it would suit some clubs, but not, not everybody, I don't think. Yeah. Um, it, it, Hibs, are they the team to beat in this one? Yeah. I think they'll, they'll be head and shoulders above MD in, in the Championship this year, and I would think um, they'll be the, the team to beat in this cup. Yeah, quite a few people have uh, sent us uh, messages on Twitter and Facebook. Um, clearly, they were giving you pelters, Ruffy. Some Hibs fans not happy. You think it's going to be tight. I think Hibs are going to run away with the league. Um, well, the last two years, the, the clubs have run away with it. I, I just feel, as, as Gary was saying there, you've got Falkirk in there. You know, the Queen of the South are, are, are doing particularly well. If, if Hibs were to, to open up a gap, you know, I think they would be unstoppable. But I, I just feel Dundee United and teams like that, uh, all the games are going to be very, very competitive. Uh, I, I think Hibs will run away with it. I don't think there's MD in the division good enough to, to keep up with them. And I think they've got a manager that knows how to win leagues as well. So um, I think they'll, they'll be the ones to beat. Yeah, I mean, that's why you're on the programme, Gary. Just, you're a visionary. You know, you, you sense, you've looked at the teams, you've looked at the strength of it, and he knows exactly what he's talking yeah. about, Rocky. That's I'm, why he's here. I'm just writing down the date when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> just in case we have to come yeah. back to him. Absolutely. Um, OK, let's switch our attention to uh, the uh, Scotland international side for the women. Anna Senior uh, was uh, announcing her squad today for that crucial match in a couple of weeks' time in uh, Reykjavik against Iceland. A point will see us qualify for a major finals, Ruffy, and fingers crossed, although mm -hmm. it's a tall order to get a, a, ask for a point against Iceland. They've been superb. Yeah, they certainly have, but it just shows you how the, the women's football's come on in the last two or three years. I'm just looking at the pool there. Uh, five or six of the players are now playing abroad. You know, Bayern Munich, Seattle, Man City. You know, it's it just amazing, you know, the girls have moved on for just playing with the Scottish clubs and it just shows you how good they're getting, you know, that these bigger clubs are 
poaching them and taking away and they only can learn by the experience of playing with these big clubs. It's super. Yeah, really. and here's the uh, squad that uh, Anna Senior has uh, selected. And uh, in there, uh, I think young Abigail Harrison from Hibernian uh, will be absolutely delighted to be included in the squad, whether she has a part to play. Only time will tell. And there's been more than a few uh, girls there that have been on our show. Uh, Kim Little, of course, uh, was... Uh, uh, superb for Seattle Rain, and uh, no surprise, she's one of the world's top midfielders, Ruffy. Yeah, again, you know, it's, it's just a, a fact uh, to where our, our women are now. They're, they're, they're competing with the big clubs. Uh, we have got the, the, the best players as well, and that's why they're doing so well at international. That's why you want to see them get into a big national tournament to, to gain more and more experience. Yep, qualifying for the tournament will be a major uh, shot in the arm again for the ever-progressing women's game. Uh, delighted that, uh, Gary, you could join us. We wish you the very best of luck. Um, it must be difficult for you to be at a club where the manager is more skillful than yourself, um, but I'm sure you'll come to terms with that. Uh, Ian McCall paid me to say that. Um, anyway, we wish you, United, the very best of luck. Uh, and Gary Harkins, I'm sure, will be back with us on the programme in the near future. Uh, Air United against uh, Morton at the weekend. Thanks to Gary and from Ruffy and myself. Join us tomorrow at 7 if you can.